Yo, how's it hanging ladies and gents? My name is Enemy IC, and as you saw from the title and the thumbnail, today I'm going to be discussing Nen from Hunter x Hunter. Now, this is a very complex topic as Nen has changed so much over the series and will continue to change as we learn more about it and discover new things, but I will be doing my best in this video to cover it as in-depth as I can while also making it easier for you to digest, and without making this video be over an hour long like somebody we all know, <clears throat> spooky, anywho, don't forget, if you do enjoy the video, or it helps you to better understand Nen, then hit that like button, and if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe as well. Now this video will be chopped into separate parts, as I find it the easiest for me to explain without making your heads explode, as there will be a lot to digest. There will also be timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. One final thing, I'm a shit weeb and my pronunciation is absolutely garbage, so please bear with me. But enough of all that, let's get straight into the video. So the first part of this video is going to be on what Nen is. I know it sounds silly seeing as how that's what I said I'd just be explaining throughout the video, but just trust me, it'll make more sense as we go along. Nen, or as it's called in the Viz translation, Mind Force, is a technique for controlling or using life energy. This life energy is better known as Aura, and this Aura gives the user psychological or supernatural-like powers and abilities. Also, a quick fun fact that outside of the Hunter Association, very few people even know of Nen's existence, which has no real relation to Nen, it's just something I found interesting. Anyway, back to Nen. Every living being has an Aura. Generally, most remain unaware of it and are incapable of using its power. Life energy passes through the aura nodes of a person. Usually people are unable to control these nodes and they remain closed, hence an inability to use Nen. So I'm sure, as you're able to guess, the first step to learning Nen is how to open said nodes. However, this is easier said than done, and unless you're a prodigy, but most people aren't. This is implied to be a time-stakingly long process. However, aside from Zushi, we only see Gon, Killua, and Karapika actually learn it. However, not everyone in the universe is going to be a Gon or Killua, and to be honest, we don't really see how long it takes Karapika. We just see the techniques he learns and his Nen type, so for the time being, I'd say Zushi is the only real example we have to go off of. We do also have one quote from Wing, who went on to say that the slow way can take the average hunter years of meditation, but then says it all depends on talent as well. So we don't really have an average amount of time it would take somebody to learn Nen, but it just depends on the talent of said user. So I've been talking about the slow meditation, but I never really explained what it is, so I'll do that now. So both ways to learn Nen start at the same point, and that is Aura Nodes. As we went over earlier, Aura Nodes are the points in which your life energy flows out of the most, and nodes remain closed until you learn how to open them. This can be done one of two ways, the slow meditation way or the quick and dangerous way. We'll be going over the meditation way first, as it's longer and takes more time to explain. So as I said earlier, it takes significantly longer to explain this method. However, there are some advantages, there is little to no risk when learning it, and possibly the biggest advantage, you become more experienced with Nen and you have a better understanding of Nen and its properties before you start training. In order to unlock Nen through this method, you must meditate. The meditation methods of use are known as are the four most common methods of learning Nen. These techniques are also the four major principles of Nen, and they are known as Ten, or Two Point, is to focus is the focus of the mind and your goals zetsu or tongue put it into words ren or temper intensify your will hatsu or release put it to action now we'll be coming back to these later when we discuss techniques to training but for now let's just go over what they mean individually when it comes to meditation so starting off with 10, you have to start off by choosing why you want to learn Nen and what your goal is and setting your mind to it with 100% focus that's the basis of what 10 is so we're going to move on to now Zetsu. And now it's a bit weird because you could say it out loud to yourself or others. It's never really stated in specific. My interpretation of it is that you repeat your goal over and over in your head. But as I said, this part is a tad unclear. Ren is a bit similar as it's not stated what exactly it means. But I think, again, it's up to interpretation is mine. And mine is just you put it all of, uh, put all of your mind to it with 100% dedication. Finally, Hatsu. It's the finale and the most simple. It's unlocking your Nen and combining all of what you've done up to this point in your meditation slash training. Those were the four major principles of meditation, and in general, they take a while to get done. But once you get this done, you open up your aura nodes and are ready to train to use them. But before I go over the training techniques, I'm going to quickly go over the more dangerous method, as it's how Gon, Kilua, and the Chimera Ants learned. It's also suggested that's how Karapika learned, but... That's besides the point. The more dangerous method, known as Senrai, or Baptism, is the use of Nen to force a person's aura nodes open. The way you would do this is by having somebody with Nen force their Nen into your body. This can be done a multitude of ways. For example, Wing did this the safest way possible by forcing his aura through their, his hands into Goat and Killua. The only other time we really see this done is when the Chimera Ants with Nen are punching the ones without it in order to open up their nodes. However, this is the most dangerous way to do this as it could have permanent damage or even death. However, it does have its own advantages. This, the obvious is if you could survive it, then you have saved yourself possible years of meditation. 
However, in my opinion, the biggest advantage that ties in with the speed is that while you're not as familiar with the four major principles, you have an excess amount of time to learn techniques and start with your Hatsu. However, as stated before, there is the major downfall of this and it is possibly death. This is this method is why this method is frowned upon by most teachers and as you are really risking the student's life. Nen, even if you don't know Nen. Aura has a different feel as well depending on the user's intentions looking at the Heavens Arena arc and Chimerian arc, you see obvious examples. For instance, when Goni Killua can't walk down a hallway due to negative aura and Nova is completely broken just by seeing Pito's negative aura. These are two examples of what's known as bloodlust, and I'll explain it now. Aura carries with it the desires and emotions of one who deploys it, which is what allows for Nen to have an incredible versatility for those who develop their skill at using it, and is also heavily influenced by the mental and emotional state of the user. A basic application of this phenomenon is that the person can channel their aggression or malice into aura and deploy it towards another person. This is what I meant when I said bloodlust. The antagonist will then be able to feel that bloodlust as if it were physically palpable. And if unable to un keep their body from it by deploying their own nen, he or she may be psychologically as well physically harmed by it. In certain instances, emotional factors may even lead to one exceeding their current ceiling. This could potentially prove advantageous, but in general, using one's powers beyond their ability comes with a great risk and will ultimately cause strain. Though Nen's aura is influenced by one's mental and emotional condition, it is difficult to judge what extent these factors affect Nen. Biscuit became able of altering her appearance without actively training for it, instead just wishing for her body to change for years which caused changes to manifest little by little. And one quick side note before I get back into the four major principles, I just want to say that it is generally believed that the quicker you can learn Nen, the higher up your ceiling will be and how strong you as an end user can become. It is also suggested through characters like Gon, Kilawa, and Ilumi, and others in the Zoldak family, that genetics play a part. However, this is never confirmed, it is more implied, so I'll leave that up for you to decide. I, personally, think it affects your strength potential, but it also could not, so if you would disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and explain your reasoning. The four main techniques in their subcategories appear to be able to be learned in any order, and they are as follows. Ten, Zetsu, Ren, Hatsu. These are the hard to learn basic techniques that get easier over time. So starting off with 10, it is the process of keeping the aura around your body instead of it escaping once you open your nodes. This essentially makes a shroud around the user's body. This shroud is also the most basic defense against Nen attacks. However, it isn't strong enough to keep out physical attacks, so it is nowhere near the perfect defense a user can have. One benefit of 10, however, is that since the aura is being kept from leaking out, it slows down the aging process. This is because aura is life energy, so it makes sense that keeping said life energy inside you would extend your life and give you a youthful appearance. This is how someone like Netero, who was stated to be as old when Zeno was a baby, was able to maintain a youthful, well, debatable appearance. Next on the explanation block is Zetsu. It's almost on the complete opposite side of 10 in the fact that 10 controls life energy while leaking and Zetsu is shutting off your aura completely. You do this by closing all of your aura nodes. This makes the user much more sensitive to aura and then for other users. This technique is commonly used for tracking, hunting, and hiding from people. This technique also recharges your energy and helps with fatigue by pulling your life energy back into your body. However, the problem with Zetsu is what happens when you get caught. If you get hit by any attack enhanced by Nen, even if it's a little bit weak, it can cause serious damage. Gon actually learned Zetsu in the wild during the hunter exams while trying to stay hidden from Hisoka. Next is Ren, and Ren is directly correlates to Ten, as you as in you can't use Ren without some basic knowledge of Ten. The reason for this being that Ren takes your ability to focus aura and extends it by expanding upon it and intensifying said aura. The goal with this is to increase your amount of aura while trying to keep it as close and condensed to your body as possible. The primary use for Ten, or Ren, is attacking an opponent. It also improves the durability given by Ten while also giving the user a strength boost. It also helps provide extra aura for more advanced techniques. The last basic principle is Hatsu, and this is a bit more complex principle and can be difficult to explain. It'll also be explained more when we get into the user types, but we aren't there yet, so let's just stay focused and we'll get back there later. The basic idea of Hatsu is the release of a user's aura to perform a specific task. The reason this can be difficult to explain is because everyone's Hatsu is different. These are known as Nen abilities, Hatsu abilities, or Hatsu. They are, they are the user's personal expression of Nen that creates the special and unique abilities 
that they call Nen abilities. Hatsu abilities are also unrelated to the other three principles, meaning you don't have you don't learn Hatsu in the same way you do those three. You have to discover your Nen ability on your own, and they usually reflect a person is as an individual and what they want to accomplish. Those are the four major principles, but there are some more advanced techniques I want to go over briefly before we go into user types. Now, before I do go into those advanced techniques, I do want to, however, mention that you don't need to know Hatsu in order to learn these techniques, as it's its own separate thing. First up, though, is Gyo. Gyo is an advanced version of Ren, where you focus a large portion of aura into any part of the user's body. However, it is more commonly used in the user's eyes. This gives the ability to see aura and none abilities, which counts as the next advanced technique I'll be going over right now. The next technique is known as In. And it is an advanced form of Zetsu, it is a way of concealing the user's aura, however you don't need to shut off your aura nodes in order to do this, because the aura is still there and it's just invisible. This is beneficial for setting traps or attacking stealthily, however as I mentioned when going over Gyo, the aura is still there so it can be seen clear as day when using Gyo. The third technique up is N, and N is the combination of Ten and Ren. Typically, Ren Aura is close to the user's body, however with N, the user extends the aura out and uses 10 to control it. While normally a sphere, it is common and necessary to note that the shape can take on many different forms besides a sphere. For instance, Pito's N stretches out in separate tendrils which can reach distances up to 2 kilometers. The, this is usually done to detect other people and their N or their life energy or whatever have you. This however is a very tasking technique that can drain your energy and life aura very quickly. The fourth technique up is called Shu. Shu is an advanced version of Ten and the user shrouds an object in aura as if it were an extension of the body. For example, one could use Shu to extend their Ten around a weapon which would strengthen and protect it. In the show, we see Gon and Killua use this technique to dig their way through a mountain. Next up is Ko. Now Ko is a combination of Ten, Zetsu, Hatsu, Ren, and Gyo in which all of the user's aura is concentrated into one particular body part. Gyo is used to focus the aura into that part of the body type, while Net Ten is used to prevent it from dispersing. Zetsu is used to completely stop the flow of Nen in all other parts of the body, increasing the output in the desired area. With Ren, the amount of aura is increased even further. This makes that one body part extremely powerful, but at the cost of leasing, leaving the rest of the user's body completely unprotected. Due to the risk it carries, Ko is regarded as a purely offensive technique. An incomplete version of this technique can be used without Ren, primarily to master the other steps before increasing the amount of aura to concentrate and contain some Nen users. Enhancers in particular employ Ko as a Nen ability by adding conditions to it. So let's switch things up with the defensive technique that is Ken. Now Ken is the advanced version of Ren and Ten techniques. It is a primarily defensive technique where a user maintains a state of Ren for a prolonged amount of time. The amount of aura surrounding the user's body during Ken is ten times higher than during Ten. Ken allows a Nen user to guard against attacks from any direction, but the large amount of aura produced makes it tiring to maintain. It is considered the best option to defend against Ko despite not being as powerful as the latter on any given body part as it protects all of it evenly. When not immediately at risk of being struck by Ko, Ken is utilized when one wants to be cautious. Some Nen users choose to expand its radius so as to sense incoming attacks that they are not able to see, a miniature N of sorts. Sometimes Ken is wrongly called Ren due to the similarities between the two techniques. Finally on this long list of techniques we've reached the last one which is Ryu. Ryu is the term for the use of Go from a state of Ken to perform real time offensive and defensive value adjustments. If Ko evolves 100% of an ends your aura to offense or more, much more rarely to defense and Ken splits it evenly between the two, Ryu is redistributing one's aura according to any other percentage. For example, by focusing 70% of one's aura in a fist as one is about to strike, or 80% in one's leg to block an incoming kick, it is utilized to damage a Ken user without leaving oneself as unprotected as during Ko. Although the power of this technique is lower, Ryu is difficult to master as it requires not only one to control aura's flow with great precision, but also to be able to estimate the amount of aura utilized by the opponent at a glance. Even the technique it is performed correctly, the movements of the aura flow risk giving away the user's next movement if they're too slow. Now, I'm going to summarize that a little bit simpler. Um, basically, you're just looking at um, you're looking at what an opponent is going to do, for example. 
and wherever they're focusing the nen, so if they focus into ko in their arm, you'll take whatever percentage of your nen is needed and focus it into your arm to block that without completely shutting off all of the nen flow in the rest of your body. I hope that makes sense. And uh, I'm sorry if these were a bit to digest. I understand, but I hope everyone was able to understand them, and I hope I did them justice. But now onto the next subject, which gets a bit more complicated. So you remember when I mentioned user types a little bit earlier? Well, now it's time for those suckers. So now, NEN users can be easily divided into one of six categories, and those categories are as follows. Enhancement, transmutation, conjuration, emission, manipulation, and finally specialist. Every NEN user can be put into one of these categories, and there is a, several tests of which user type you are, and it involves a cup of water. The first one. A user forces their NEN into a cup of water, and depending on the change in the water, you'll have your NEN type, and they are as follows. If the volume of the water changes, then the user is an enhancer. If the taste of the water changes, then the user is a transmuter. If impurities appear in the water, then the user is a conjurer. If the color of the water changes, then the user is an emitter. If the leaf moves on the water's surface, then the user is a manipulator. If a completely different change appears, then the user is a specialist. However, this is not the only test as I mentioned earlier. There are other two tests. First up is Hisoka's uh, Aura Personality Diagnosis, and this is a NEN type identification method used by Hisoka by which he claims he can judge a person's NEN type based on nothing but their personality. And according to him, all people of one aura type generally have the same personality. This method, however, by his own admission, is no more reliable than trying to discover someone's zodiac sign or blood type from just a personality analysis. And according to his theory, enhancers are simple and determined, most of them never, never lie, hide nothing, and are very straightforward in their actions and their thinking. Their words are often dominated by their feelings, they are generally very selfish and focused on their goals. This is reflected in their NEN as enhancers typically rely on simple and uncomplicated NEN abilities. Transmuters are whimsical, prone to deceit, fickle transmutation users have unique attitudes and are regarded as weirdos and tricksters. Often they put forth a facade while hiding the truer aspects of their personality. Even when they don't hide their personalities, they rarely reveal their true intentions. Many transmuters rely on techniques that give unique and unpredictable properties to their NEN that reflects their personalities. Emitters are impatient, not detail-oriented, short-tempered, and quick to react in a volatile manner. They resemble the enhancers in building their impulsivity, but the difference between them is emitters tend to calm down and forget easier. Because of the nature of emission, many NEN abilities created by emitters are primarily at long range. Conjurers are typically high strung or overly serious, stoic and nervous. They often are on guard to be cautious, they are observant and logical, and they rarely fall into traps. Being able to analyze things calmly is the strength of conjurers, and many of the items conjured create are often used by them in very deliberate and practical fashion. Manipulators are argumentative and logical. They advance at their own pace and tend to want to keep their families and loved ones safe. On the other hand, when it comes to pushing their own goals, they do not listen to what others might have to say about it. While manipulators often use techniques that allow him to control their opponents, some may choose an inanimate medium to control. Finally are specialists. Specialists are independent and charismatic. They say anything important to them and will refrain from being close friends. But because of their natural charisma that draws others, they are always surrounded by people. Because specialization is unique and can have many facets, most specialists only possess one net ability. That is Hisoka's uh, personality test. And as he said, it's not very reliable, and I genuinely wouldn't trust a pedo who showed his dick to kids, but I digress. On to the next test. Furry Krav was able to construct a system to identify NEN users and their NEN types through observation alone, which he claimed was from his experience. According to him, a very uh, differentiate NEN users and non-NEN users is that the outline of the former's iris, when looked at from the side, appears discontinuous. One of the shortcomings of this method, however, is that it cannot tell NEN users proper apart from individuals who have only half awakened. A person's NEN category can be determined through some habits of theirs and the flow of their ten. Now, like I said before, I don't think that these kind of things are uh, reliable. The personality thing is kind of inconsistent, but anywho, we've already been here for a while and I haven't even got to conditions yet. 
So the next thing I need to explain is what each Nen type is. And I'm going to go over this very briefly because um, I plan to go over all of these in depth in their own separate videos. So if you guys want to see that, leave a like and subscribe. Um, yeah, let's get straight into this. So the first one is Enhancers. Enhancement is the ability to use aura to increase natural abilities of an object or one's own body. Therefore, enhancers are able to greatly increase their physical attack and defense and are best suited for melee combat. Proficient enhancers, who also take good care of their body, can make it more durable than tanks and generate the force of a missile with one blow. It is rare to fire male enhancers with supportive abilities since most of them look to increase their combat prowess. Next up are transmuters. Transmission means a person can change the properties of their aura to mimic something else or only specific attributes. Altering the shape of one's aura falls into the Nen category too. Similar to emission, constructs created via transmutation are pure aura, therefore they are invisible to individuals incapable of using Nen. Transmutation is often mistaken for conjuration due to their similarities. The difference is that transmutation allows the user to mimic the properties of the substance, whereas conjuration changes aura into the actual substance. Third up on the list is emission. Emission means that the user has an easier time separating their aura from the body. Aura usually decreases in intensity very quickly when it leaves the source body, but adept emitters can separate their aura from their body for long periods of time over long distances and still be able to maintain it and its functions, basically saying that all of the emitters are usually long range. Next up are conjurers. Conjuration is intended as the ability to create a physical independent material object out of one's aura. However, users of this category can also create laws and principles and affix them to a specific area. The durability of a conjured object can generally be taken as a measure of the user's skill, although conjurations can be used to strengthen it. Second to last on the list is manipulators. Manipulation is allows the user to control living or non-living things, including aura constructs. The main adv advantage of this category in combat is the ability to manipulate the enemy themselves. Abilities of this type are typically feared because the fight can be brought to an end as soon as the conditions are met. The aura of the ability mixes with the targets. Although it is not normally noticeable, the degree of control is, for the most part, determined by a condition that may or may not put the manipulator at a risk or disadvantage, such as attaching objects to, onto an enemy, touching the enemy in a certain way. The higher the difficulty for the H condition to be achieved, the better degree of control. However, it is impossible for a target that is already under control to be under the effect of another manipulation. Now finally on the list is the specialist. Specialists can be broadly determined as anything that does not belong in the other five categories, making it the Vegas Nen type. According, accordingly, its effects are wide ranging and some influence Hatsu itself. For example, appropriating others Nen's ability and altering affinities while others allow the user to gamer knowledge that would be unattainable through other means, such as past or future events that have completely different effects. And that pretty much sums up what the six user types are. Once again, if you want a better or more in-depth description, hit that like button and let me know what user type you want to see first. However, the next thing I need to explain still involves those six, and that is the Nen chart. There are numer numerical approximations to indicate just how efficient one would be at using aura abilities that one is not born into. Starting at one's own aura type, the one has a, the potential to be 100% efficient at using abilities based on that category. Then looking at the category, one has the potential to be 80% of efficiency are the left and right. Next below that, those two, they're at 40%, and the bottom one, and the bottom one is zero, as typically that's specialization if we're looking from enhancement to specialization. The only people that can really learn specialist abilities besides specialists are conjurers and manip manipulators, as they have a 1% chance of succeeding. Um, so that's pretty much the types and the Nen chart. Uh, it's pretty hard. Sometimes it can be hard to understand the Nen chart. Um, I know I kind of rushed through it a little bit there. Um, I think I did a, an okay job though. But on to the final discussion, vows and limitations. Being a product of the mind, Nen responds to the goals, strengths, and desires of the individual users. As a result, a student of Nen can increase the overall power of an individual skill by stating a self-imposed restriction that forces even more conditions on it. 
For example, if one con consciously decides to do something along the lines of, I will only use this skill on Thursdays, or I will only use this power against short people, and it manages to abide by that rule, then that particular skill will become stronger. Those conditions are called limitations. In the act of swearing to respect them, vow or contract, the stricter the limitation, the stronger the user's resolve, and thus the more ability is strengthened. However, limitations are considered to be liabilities since the power they grant is not consistent. Unlike normal conditions which establish the general parameters of an ability and activation requirements which determine the circumstances in which said ability can be used, a limitation can be broken. However, doing so not only entails the loss of the ability it was used on, but it also carries the risk of obliterating one's capacity to use NEN altogether. Limitations that contain some sort of punishment, e i.e., I will die if I break this rule, will strengthen the ability even further. An example of this is provided by Karapika, who swore on his own life to not use an ability on anyone but the Phantom Troop. According to Izunavi, without that added risk, the ability would not have worked. Aside from vows and limitations, the creator of a Nen ability can include conditions in it to increase the power or make the ability feasible in the first place. Whether because the user lacks the degree of skill otherwise required, or because the effects of the ability exceed what can be achieved with Nen without a trade-off. Much like limitations, conditions are based on the principle of equivalent exchange. Although they are seemingly weaker and may occasionally be rendered redundant by high proficiency in Nen, unlike limitations which, can't be broken at, which can be broken at a severe cost, it does not appear to possible to violate the conditions of an ability. The three categories at the bottom of the Nen chart, Conjuration, Specialization, and Manipulation, are the ones that appear to rely on conditions the most. The unconscious of the ability creator plays a fundamental role in determining the exact boundaries of a condition where the, those boundaries are not rendered explicit. Order Stamp works only on puppets, which are defined as non-living objects with a discernible head, and vice versa. This means that if the puppet's head is removed, it ceases to be counted and the ability terminates. Additionally, since the creator did not view human corpses as mere objects despite them otherwise fitting the description, Krolo, who in, uh, inherited the ability, had no such um, compunction and was still unable to manipulate the corpses via aura stamp. However, it could be used on replicas of corpses, however. And that pretty much does it for the video on Nen. I'm sorry, it was such a long video, um, much longer than my last video. And I'm also sorry it took so long to get out. Um, I've been kind of in a weird flip-flop. I've had to balance schoolwork with all this corona stuff and quarantine. It, it, there's a lot of online work. And I'm really just making excuses, and I'm sorry about that. But uh, anyway, it's been icy.